hey guys, today we are at the museum with Miss Lynn and she's going to show us how to make something really tasty today. We are in the kitchen of the Jennings Brown House, which is our historic house museum. Um, the Jennings Brown House was built around 1826. The kitchen is separate, which is the way they would have done it back then because they didn't want, um, if there was a fire in the kitchen, they didn't want it to spread to the rest of the house. And also, it would get pretty hot in the kitchen when they were cooking and it would keep the rest of the house cool. So that's, um, that's why it's a separate building from the rest of the house. What we're making today is colonial squash and apples. Yeah. Now, this was a very common dish back in the colonial period in America. Um, it just uses a few very simple ingredients, which makes sense because they wouldn't have had access to a lot of ingredients back then. You know, just what they had, right. what they could grow themselves, basically. Um, so that's what we're going to make. And we're going to start out with a butternut squash. This is a butternut squash, guys. <laughs> And we're going to cut that up. We actually have cut that up into little pieces. I think Ms. Nicole's got a little bit more left to do there. Yeah, just a little bit, not yeah. much. We're cutting up a butternut squash, and we're also cutting up some gala apples. It calls for one squash and four apples. And we're just cutting them up bite size, right? Yeah. We try to cut them kind of the same size as each other so they'll cook the same. Okay. Now, Ms. Lynn, I noticed that there isn't any electricity in here, so there's no right. light, so right. why? Uh, well, because back in 1826, for a long time after that, there was not electricity. Um, they would have, this, this was the stove. They would have cooked over an open fire, okay. and they would have used a, an oil lamp or a candle to see by. So they probably did basically their cooking during the day, because it was just too hard to see. Because they couldn't see it. Yeah, that's what right. I would think. Help you with these oh, apples. Thank you. All right. Okay. So we've got all that cut up. What's next, Miss Lynn? We are going to melt two tablespoons of butter in a skillet. Okay. I'm going to use this knife to get it out. Well. There we go. <laughs> okay, that's good enough. Now, I was doing some research on this, you know, getting ready for today, and I found out that squash was um, a staple of the Native American diet, that um, squash along with corn and beans were called the three sisters in a lot of Native American cultures because they just get together really well and they were nutritionally they get together and also they were good to grow together for various reasons. So they are called the three sisters. And now we're just going to add this to the skillet. Now we cook this down for a little bit. Um, it says cook it until it, the juices start to flow, and then once they do that, we'll do a couple more things to it to make it even better than this. Okay, sounds good. So we have our butternut squash and our apple cooking in a little bit of butter. And it smells so good, It too. really does, doesn't it? You know, Thanksgiving is next week, and yes, I think right. this would be a really good side dish for a Thanksgiving meal. I think so too. And the reason I think so is because I did a little bit of research, and I found out that this very dish was served at the very first Thanksgiving dinner that was ever held at the White House. Wow. Yeah. And now I'm not sure about this next part, but I got to wondering who that was, you know. And I did a little bit more research, and from what I can tell, President James K. Polk hosted the first Thanksgiving dinner at Wallace. And he was president from 1845 to 1849. So it was in some time in that time period when this dish was first served at Wallace. Cool. Yeah. And that would have also been the same period of time when this kitchen would be used to put that dinner with us too. Well, I think this is about ready for us to add the brown sugar. Alright, and we've got one half a cup of brown sugar. Yeah. 
Now it's going to get really good. And I'm going to get sweet. Oh, yeah. I'm probably shaking it off a little bit, too, I would think. I don't know exactly how that works. There we go. Okay, Miss Lynn, I got the um, brown, the cinnamon. Okay, we need three, three. spoons of cinnamon. All right, so that's that in there? one. I know it really smells good, doesn't it? It really does. Cinnamon and the brown sugar. Mm -hmm. Just sprinkle that on there like that. Oh, yeah. And we got one more. All right. Okay, now let's we'll give that another stir and let it cook for a little bit longer. Mmm, it smells so good. It really does. All right, guys, we have been letting this cook for 25 minutes now. And that is the end result. But we have one more tasty treat. Miss Lynn, can you tell them what that is? It is pecans. Now it says we are supposed to sprinkle those over the top, so we'll just do that. It's amazing how tender that squash got in that 25 minutes. In the minutes. 25 minutes. Yeah. I was actually wondering, was, was it going to be really tender? Yeah, I didn't think it was going to be. I didn't either. In fact, we were both saying, oh, I don't want to try that one. <laughs> <laughs> but it and actually looks good. Now I can't wait to dig in. I know. Well, the pecans are going to make it even better. Should we stir it in a little bit? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Get some of that butter to take them too. All right, we've got our end results. We've got our butternut squash, our apples, cinnamon, pecans, and butter and brown sugar. So I'm just gonna taste it. Mmm, oh my goodness. Have you guys really actually tried this recipe? It's really good and it's actually healthy too. So, before we end our program today, guys, every third Wednesday of every month, we will be doing another cooking show and we're going to have good food tasty treats so everybody make sure you tune in and also at the museum and your public library here in Bennettsville there is recipes sitting out front or in the library on how to make the colonial squash and apples all right guys thank you one oh miss Lynn thank you so much today for letting us come and use the kitchen thank you for coming all right